My dear friends, this video is made with the intention of helping the novice phaco surgeon in achieving a good hold, a crack and separation while performing the direct vertical chop. Now let's look at some of the troubleshoot that one faces with the direct chop. Do you find it easy to chop a grade 2 nucleus but not a grade 4 nucleus carotid cataract? Do you end up with uneven sized phaco fragments with the phaco chop? Do you find it difficult to crack the posterior plate in hard cataracts? And does the crack not include the amorphous core? Now with the correct technique, it is possible to crack the nucleus through and through with the direct vertical chop. The most important component of the direct vertical chop is the hold of the nucleus with the phaco tip. A good hold will depend on three things. Firstly, the depth of the hold the angle of attack of the phaco probe, or horizontal or vertical, and the place of impalement of the tip onto the nucleus, whether it's central, proximal, or distal. Now, these variables become more critical as you deal with much harder cataracts. Now, let us consider some nucleus types. Now, this is a grade one nucleus sclerotic cataract. The endonucleus is about one to two millimeters in size. In grade two nucleus sclerotic cataract, the endonucleus is much larger, three to four millimeters in size. And in a grade 3, endonucleus is about 4 to 5 millimeters in size. And finally, in a grade 4 nucleus sclerotic cataract, the endonucleus is quite large. It's more than 5 millimeters in size. Now, this is the blue light test which helps us to grade the density of the cataract. And of course, there are much harder cataracts like the grade 5 to 6 cataracts as well. In order to crack and split the nucleus, the tip should be buried to just beyond its horizontal midpoint. In a grade 4 cataract, a dense central amorphous core develops due to compaction of lens fibers. This is not usually more than 2 millimeters. To crack the core, the tip has to penetrate the amorphous core. Now, let's look at the depth. In a grade 1 or 2 nucleosclerotic cataract, the tip has to be buried to just about a millimeter into the nucleus and the angle of attack would be steep or shallow. However, in a grade 4 nucleosclerotic cataract, a shallow angle of attack will completely miss the amorphous core. And therefore, in these cataracts, it is important that the angle of attack is more vertical so that you can drive the tip into the amorphous core and only then you will succeed in creating the crack. Now, let's look at a few examples. Now, this is the center of the nucleus and the place of impalement of the phaco tip should in a grade 1 nucleus sclerotic cataract be around this point near its center. However, in a grade 4 nucleus sclerotic cataract, the impalement of the tip should be more proximal. Now, let's look at this case. It's a pretty shallow angle of attack. I'm going almost like I'm creating a trench. But as long as the phaco tip is about a millimeter into the nucleus substance, it's easy to crack the cataract because the endonucleus itself is just about one or two millimeters in size. Just burying the tip into the nucleus, even with a very shallow angle of attack, can enable you to crack this nucleus quite easily. Now, this is a secret that the tip should be carried to beyond the horizontal midpoint of the nucleus sclerosis. So, we all find it pretty simple to do a direct a vertical chop in a grade 1 to 2 nucleus sclerotic cataracts because as we make the transition from trenching to the vertical chop, our angle of attack is pretty shallow. We are used to creating a shallow angle of attack because the trenching maneuver requires a very shallow approach towards the nucleus. Now the same angle of attack will not work in a little denser nucleus sclerotic cataract. Now let's look at this cataract. This is a grade 4 nucleus sclerotic cataract. Note that I am exposing the phaco tip to 2 millimeters because this will give us an idea about how much of the tip should be buried into the nucleus. Also note that the place of impalement of the tip is now not in the center but much more proximal or much closer to the incision than in the previous case. And then I take the phaco tip deep into the endonucleus and then I initiate the crack. And you find that I am able to easily crack this lens through and through because I have got a good hold of the endonucleus. 
Remember that the minute you create the crack, the hold on the nucleus can be compromised and that is why you have to drive the phaco tip again and again into the nucleus in order to get a firmer purchase in the nucleus. Now this purchase will help you to separate the fragments. At the same time while burying the phaco tip again into the crack fragment, you have to make sure that you bury it deep into the nucleus so that you get a good hold. Please remember that getting a good hold alone is not sufficient to perform or to achieve success in a direct phaco chop. The hold is an important factor but there are other factors like how to effect the separation. So to create an effective separation you need to go into the depth of the nucleus and crack it. In the fragment my hold was a little shallow and this is the reason why I got uneven size fragments while creating the crack. Now once you have created sufficient amount of fragments then the fragment removal is quite simple. You have to use the correct amount of phaco power, the correct amount of aspiration flow rate and the nuclear fragments will be emulsified. But this is also a pretty hard cataract. In order to get an instant occlusion you generally bury the phaco tip with the bevel down position. The place of impalement should be just above the midpoint. Well even though I did everything correctly in this case, I am not able to get a through and through crack. Now this is because I have not exposed the phaco tip sufficiently. Now you see that the phaco tip is just exposed to 1 millimeter and therefore you generally tend to drive the phaco tip into the nucleus till the point where the sleeve hits against the nucleus. And even though the place of impalement is correct and the angle of attack is correct, the depth to which I am burying the phaco tip into the nucleus is not sufficient. It is not reaching the amorphous core and that is why while I crack open the lens the amorphous core is still intact. Now you can rectify this problem by going much deeper once the crack has been initiated. Bury into the amorphous core. Now once you hold the amorphous core only, it is possible for you to get a through and through crack and the posterior plate will also split open. The exposure of the phaco tip is not enough in this case. So I am not able to get to the adequate depth and once you do not get the adequate depth to which you can bury the phaco tip then it will be very difficult for you to create a through and through chop. So what is the message here is that in harder grades of cataract, you have to expose the phaco tip to at least about 2 millimeters or maybe even 2 to 3 millimeters so that the tip will, will be able to penetrate up to the midpoint of the endonucleus, which in very hard cataracts could be as much as 5 millimeters and the midpoint is 2.5 millimeters. Now this is a very hard cataract, it's almost black. Let's see how we perform the direct chop, taking into consideration all that we have learned so far. So the important thing is to expose the tip sufficiently. You have to use the adjunctive side port instrument. I'm using a 1.75 sharp tip chopper. The phaco tip is also exposed to 2 millimeters. The place of impalement of the nucleus is just proximal to the midpoint. The angle of attack is vertical. I drive the phaco tip so that it reaches the endonucleus. I create the crack and because the hold becomes a little loose while the crack is created, I bury the phaco tip deeper to hold on to this nucleus fragment. And when I take the sharp chopper deep, I'm able to actually crack and separate the fragments satisfactorily. Take another look. 
an adequate hold an adequate depth in the hold will help you to create the crack and then by taking the second instrument deep into the crack you will be able to effect a good separation of the fragments now there is another point that you have to know even though the nucleus sclerosis could be a grade 4 or even a grade 5 or 6 there are two variations in the consistency of nucleosclerotic cataract. They could either be brittle cataracts which are very easy to chop and then there is another variant called the leathery cataract. Now the leathery nature of the cataract is due to the accumulation of certain type of crystallines within the lens which has got a gummy consistency and because of this in a leathery cataract even if you bury to the adequate depth a sufficient amount of force is required in order to create or effect the lateral separation. In this grade 4 nucleosclerotic cataract, the separation looks pretty simple, mostly because this is not a very leathery cataract, but it is a brittle cataract. You have to create more number of fragments when you are dealing with a harder cataract. One is to minimize the, the FACO energy and uh, the second is to help you to mobilize the nucleus fragments in a much more easier fashion. So keeping the FACO tip in the central zone and also exchanging the sharp chopper to a Sinsky hook, it will be much easier to maneuver the pieces within the capsular bag. You stay within the central zone and give sufficient amount of power either in the multiburst mode or you could use even a continuous mode of FACO emulsification. Use a high flow rate say about 40 cc per minute and a high vacuum about 400 millimeters of mercury. In a venturing machine I set a vacuum of 350 millimeters of mercury. In hard cataracts, endothelial protection again is affected with the use of dispersed viscoelastic sufficiently. I hope this little tutorial on the hold, the depth, the angle of attack and the place of impalement of the tip has helped you to some extent and it will change the way you perform the direct vaco chop. I thank you all for your attention.